By 1950, Jean Renoir, after 25 years of directing some of the finest films ever made, both in his native France and here in America, still hadn't shot a picture in color. Since he was the son of the great Impressionist painter Renoir, to see what he would do with a color film was, in serious film circles, a much anticipated event. It finally came about through a strange set of coincidences. A book review led Renoir to read an autobiographical novel by the English writer Rumor Godin called The River, about an English family living in Bengal, India. And Renoir became determined to do the film, but for a picture in India, the Hollywood studios wanted elephants and tiger hunts, and here was a simple story of children growing up, discovering love and death. Meanwhile, an L.A. florist, an ex-U.S. Air Force man, Ken McEldowney, who'd served in India, had got a few prominent Indians to finance a film to be shot in India, but they couldn't find a story until McEldowney was told by a close friend of Prime Minister Nehru about a book called The River. The rights turned out to be optioned by Jean Renoir. Well, McEldowney also was disappointed there were no tigers or elephants, but they agreed to make the movie, and in 1951 was released one of the most beautiful and haunting color films ever made. Jean Renoir's The River. As Renoir wrote in his autobiography, although the film looks like one of the most contrived of all his films, in fact, it's the one nearest to nature. If there weren't a story based on the immemorial themes of childhood, love, and death, it would be a documentary. I thought about the magic of the innumerable gods, steps leading from a noisy, harassed world to the calm, purifying waters of the river. I loved those steps. One of the things Renoir and his nephew, cameraman Claude Renoir, decided to avoid in the color photography were any sort of laboratory tricks, no special filters or retouching. Another rule was to avoid exteriors with half tints or overly delicate shades of coloring. He found Bengal ideally suited, the colors not too vivid or mixed. This lightness, he would write, reminded him of Dufy or Matisse. The green and red of the Indian flag, he wrote, are different from the green and red on the flags of other nations. I think with everything that happens to you, with every person you meet who is important to you, you either die a little bit or are born. Someone said something like that to me once. Must have been someone very wise. Oh, I remember it was little Victoria. <laughs> Did you ever die? Two or three times. Although Renoir talked to several Hollywood actors about playing the role of Captain John, a man who'd lost a leg in the war, and even discussed the part with Marlon Brando, just then hitting his stride, the director decided that such a star presence would transform the film, so he chose instead an amateur named Tom Breen, who really had lost a leg in the war. And Breen, like all the others who'd never acted before, brought an amazing like sense of truth and an awkward and honesty to their parts. A local schoolgirl named day. Patricia Walters won the leading female role, the ugly duckling Harriet, who tells the story, and a young Hindu dancer named Radha, whose father was president of the Theosophical Society, played Melanie. Using real people who in life resembled the characters makes the river, as Renoir called it, an act of homage to external truth. Fortunately, he goes on, external truth in India is anything but ordinary. There's a remarkable ease and artlessness to the river, a kind of complex simplicity that only the greatest of artists can achieve. It has that spellbinding ebb and flow of real life, of life without beginning or end much like a river. And so the film takes us along for a while and gives us, with its profound love of people, a real sense of humanity seen through the eyes of a poet. The baby and us, the big river, the whole world and everything. Early in the shooting, the Indian electricians were having mishaps with the heavy equipment until one of them suggested these troubles were caused by the company's neglect of the goddess Kali, who in the Hindu trinity personifies both creation and destruction. As Renoir said, for the Hindus, one cannot exist without the other. The crew recommended a puja, a ceremony of propitiation to the goddess, which Renoir promptly filmed. And after that, from then on, there were no more injuries. The next day, at setting of the sun, the symbols of Kali were taken to the water. The river runs, the round world spins. Dawn and lamplight, midnight, noon. Sun follows day, night, stars, and moon. The day ends, the end begins.